Thank you, Lord. Seems that's one. So we'll try another one. Because <laughs> it does help. Thank you, Jesus. You got a shout of praise with you this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Is anything good to you? Yeah. It's because of that mercy. Yeah. Glory, glory. Can you testify to that? See, that's what praise and worship's about. Not singing a song together. It's responding. It's responding. It's responding. <laughs> yes, Lord, you're a shield around me. Thank you for that shield, Lord Jesus. I give you glory and thanks for it, Lord. We lift our hands and we give you praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. says it's good to give thanks to God our maker to sing your praise Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise and give him glory. Just in your own words. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for life, my God, and life. What a goodness, Lord. We can enjoy it right now, Father God. You do it, you do it anytime, Lord. Oh, I praise your glory be to Jesus. We get your glory, honor, and power, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Yes, Lord, we give you the glory this morning. To you be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise and all the worship.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To Him be glory. To Him be glory. Just give Him glory. Just give Him praise this morning. We honor you, Lord Jesus, this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come, to gather together, to give your glory and honor and to praise your name, and to lift your name above our circumstances, to lift your name above everything else, because your name is the name that is above all names. And we'll give glory to that name, and we'll give honor to that name, and we'll bow to that name, and we'll worship that name, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And your word stands for all eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Anybody got a shout of praise this morning? You may be seated. I trust you all had a good week. Yes, to everybody joining online, I apologize. You don't have a picture, but you've got sound. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> I didn't brush my hair this morning. <laughs> Your announcements. Wednesday evening will be prayer. Saturday morning prayer meeting. Sunday 10 o'clock service. And then what's happening Sunday? Father's Day. So if you could bring some snacks for Father's Day, we'd appreciate it. And then uh, we have a birthday this week. Mr. Timamum on Friday. Happy, happy birthday. No, I remember that didn't realize the date already. I trust your wife is going to take you for a nice lunch or dinner. Yeah, something like that. Mm. Unless you cook my favorite. There we go. <laughs> Either or. Win-win. Yes. Amen. Amen. What was the last time I ministered? What were I minister on? Decisions determine your destiny. And what did Jason measure, minister on the following week? <coughs> the gifts yeah. you know the Bible has equipped you yes. Yes. Amen. and you've been equipped with the Holy Spirit yes. Yes. Amen. so I'm, I'm going to continue on the route where we're talking about your decisions because we need to clarify a few things and I think it's important in the day and age that we live in and with the word that we've received <coughs> that we have a thorough understanding of what we have in Christ. Yes. Amen. And one of the things that is a great topic, and you can research it, and you can go into ministries, and they'll talk about dominion. Yeah. But sometimes, most times, it's a bit unbalanced. Mm. Because people run around like they own the place. Name it and claim it. Blab it and grab it. And I believe in confession, and you can have what you say, but you've got to understand, firstly, to have that dominion, you've got to be under dominion. Amen. And it's lacking in the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yes, amen. I've, I've seen it firsthand. I've watched. Anyway. Yes, I'll just say it. I've watched ministers come in through ministries. And they say I'm submitted. Till it doesn't go their way. That's not submission. No. You see when it's going your way, that's agreement. Yes. Submission is when it's not going your way. Yeah. Amen. That's submission. How many marriages fail because there's no submission? You see, you can have this, this doctrine on dominion, and we'll get into it now. But you've got to understand that your life is no longer yours. Yes, amen. 
What does the Bible say? You were bought with a price. In other words, it's delegated dominion. So one of the, the, the main scriptures people like to get into, and we'll, we'll, we'll turn there, and you all know it, is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Yeah. You got your Bibles and your notebooks? Yeah. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all that creepeth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his, uh, in his image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. And that just caused a whole bunch of stuff now in the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to get into it. No. <laughs> created he them. <laughs> because we're not like that anymore. Because there was a separation that took place. Yeah. So I agree with you. But there was a separation. Yeah. And God, it's like I said, and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the air, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. He said that to man. Yeah. Yeah. And we know when Adam fell, that dominion was lost, but we know when Jesus came, he restored it. What you got to understand, when God spoke to Adam and Eve this in the Bible, they were the only humans in the garden. And you will notice that God didn't say you're going to have dominion over your kind. You don't have dominion over another man. <laughs> uh, okay. So the world we live in is a little bit different than what it was in the garden. Yes, true. Yeah, you might not like what I'm going to preach this morning because it might rub you up the wrong way. But that's why things are the way they are. I can't change a man's will. So we've got to understand and start establishing how does dominion work. Because it's one thing naming and claiming it and having dominion and having hit and miss, hit and miss and this work and I bound this and that was bound but I'm bounding this and that's not being bound and I'm releasing this and that's not being released and, and it becomes a bit, for lack of a better word, wishy-washy. And God's word is never wishy-washy. So the error is not in the word of God, it is not in God and the dominion of God that we have but it's in our understanding of the dominion that we have. And when we understand it correctly and we operate it incorrectly, we will operate effectively in the realm that we were called to operate in. Mm -hmm. And that is key to the success not only in your life but for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because the body of Christ is a little bit wishy-washy. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use an example and I'm not being cynical about it, but there were two, I'm aware of two ministries in South Africa where they preached the resurrection of the dead. They believed it in their whole heart never experienced it in the ministry, then the head pastor of that ministry died and everybody said he's going to be raised from the dead. Yeah. Two ministries I know of. One, okay, yes, I won't say. Both ministries refused to have the, the body go through the burial process because the pastor was going to be raised from the dead that the government had to take them to court to release the body. And it makes the newspapers. Yeah. Makes us wishy-washy, doesn't it? Okay. So, but the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall. Let's quote the scripture as it is. What, how does it begin? Okay. So it's biblical. And they were doing it in his name. But the dead didn't get raised. What's the problem? So why, why, why are you, you go, because like I said, it makes, it, it makes us look wishy-washy. But what does it mean to believe? And we went in this last time, two, two services ago. It's where I've died to the will of another. I'm going to put it like that. And you've got to understand the will of God for that situation. One man said to me, you know, if Jesus was alive today, the hospitals would be empty. And I said, I disagree. I disagree. 
because at the pool of Bethesda, it was full of those who were infirmities, and only one person got healed. How many people died when Jesus was around? How many people did he raise from the dead? How many people died during the time of the apostles? How many did they raise from the dead? How many people w were possessed by devils and how many were delivered? How many people were sick and how many people were healed? So yes, we can take that scripture, but we blow it, take it out of the context of what it was meant for. Because if I believe in Jesus is what he's saying, if you believe in me, these sounds, but then I'm following according to his will for my life. And I'm in the realm where I'm supposed to be. I'm in operating in the realm of dominion that he has delegated to me. Mm. And in that realm of dominion, that dominion flows from the head to the body. Yeah. But when I'm outside that realm of dominion, I can't operate in that dominion. A good example. Maybe I'm shouldn't. But I'm, I'm part of the school governing body. So we're doing certain things with the bank and changing certain things. Comes out that in terms of because we're not a non we're a non-profit company so the rules that dictate with what's it Cipra and all of that are different CRPC bank highlighted certain things we're not compliant with so I've got to become compliant and the reason we weren't compliant because as you know you, under the school's legislation you, you've got to have an SGB yeah. but now because we're a company we have to have directors so it starts blurring the lines. And the reason it blurred the lines was because we had previous people that were directors that were employed of the school, not as a principal or senior position, but in another position. I'm not going to go into too much detail. But then they would operate on the school grounds and say, I'm not talking to you from my position that I'm employed at the school. I'm talking to you as a director. But they were out of bounds because their directorship is only in the boardroom. Okay. Okay. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they were taking the dominion of the boardroom into another realm. And they weren't allowed to do it. it caused chaos. And it got dealt with. So now we have to have the same thing in place. But what I said, what we do to put in place, you've got to understand your delegation of authority, where your directorship begins and where it ends, and where your role in the school begins and it ends, and you cannot blur those lines. So I am, I am, what am I, the chair of the SGB and a director. I cannot go into that school and tell children and teachers what to do. Yeah. That is not my dominion. Yeah. However, when we have an SGB meeting, I have the authority to speak to certain things. Yeah. Right. See, if I do it, if I go to the soccer game and I'm not happy with something and I start dealing with a the coach there, I'm out of my dominion. If it's like it in the natural, how much more is it like it in the spiritual? Chip, chip, chip. I hope the gears are turning. You see, because we take this dominion message and God says, I've got dominion over all created, I've got the dominion. Hang on, let's draw back a little bit. Because things changed after Adam and Eve were in the garden. And yes, I believe fully, and you know from my preacher, God has restored it. But God has set positions in the body. Not everyone's a hand, not everyone's a finger, not everyone's a foot, not every, everyone's got a calling. And there's another thing that happens in the body of Christ. There's a position that opens. Yeah. No one goes, l l l let's use something quite simple. Quite, the, a, a praise and worship leader. Church needs a praise and worship leader. They're praying about it. They're getting somebody. So somebody steps up and says, I'll do it because no one else is doing it. Were you called to do it? No. 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 You know what you do? You block the position. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I've seen it with my own eyes. You block the position. Yeah. And then the person that's supposed to be there, it doesn't get filled by the right person because you've blocked it. Rather have no one than the incorrect one. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> you've got pastors that shouldn't be pastors. I ask you, I deal with it at work. You, you talk, as soon as somebody feels they've got a calling on their life, they love the Lord, they want to do something with the Lord, they go and they become, and they become a pastor. Yeah. Because that's the most obvious thing. But is that your calling? Yeah. Because if it's not your calling, you're going to be ineffective. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your ministry is dry. And you don't have dominion. Am I making sense? If you're not called yeah. to business, go and go to business. 
you know, even in the natural, I might think I can wire this house because I watched the video on YouTube and I really want to wire a house. But I've got to be first qualified. Yeah. And then from my qualification, I've got to be certified. A lot of people in the body of Christ are not operating <laughs> under God's certification. Yeah, yeah. That's correct, yeah. So when something's and everything's going wrong and then you're praying to God, God fix it, fix it, God says, I never put you there. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. Adjust your position. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see you see how this carries on from decisions to term and destiny. Yeah. Because a lot of people are out of the realm that God wants them in. And when I use that word realm, you understand what I mean. And I'm not talking from here. I've, I've lived it. I told you before, I got myself in that financial position. Yes, by God's grace and His mercy, we got out. But I had to learn lessons. And the first thing that I had to learn was how to follow the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. He's the representation of God on this earth. Yes. It's Amen. His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. Christ, the anointing of the anointed one, dwells within us. That's the Holy Spirit. Very different words, but they, they, they all speak to the same thing and probably just speak differently to the way that He might function in different areas and different situations, but it talks to the same thing. It talks about the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and the power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So you have the power and ability to raise the dead within you, but it will function as He wills. Yes, yes Amen. Because why, why is it different where, where he wills, and now we're going to go into the gifts, and this isn't even in my notes, but you, you know the book of Corinthians that the gifts are distributed as he wills. Yes. But you can, the Bible also says desire the spiritual gifts, but above all that you might prophesy. So you can desire something, but it's still according to his will. Yes, amen. And so that gives us a glimpse in how the Holy Spirit functions. And He will lead you. And, and bear in mind what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. He doesn't speak of Himself. It doesn't come from Him. It comes from the Father. So even the gift says He wills. is for the will of the Father. So has the Father got a will for your life? Yes. See, this is why we don't have notes. So we can jump and miss all these other scriptures and go to Ephesians chapter 2 and pick it up in verse 4. And Jason touched on some of this the other day. And while you turn there, I'll have some water. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Amen. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should work in it. In other words, there's works that He has ordained that we should work in. Walk in. Yes. So what is that word ordained? To prepare beforehand. To make ready beforehand. There's stuff that He has designed. For I know the thoughts and the plans. I have to give you. I like that, the hope and the future, to prosper you and not to harm you. It links with this. There's a, there's a path before you that's been preordained. Now, if you're not walking in that path, then I'm walking outside the plans and the thoughts that God has for me. But the plans and the thoughts that God has for me gives me an expected end. Now, my faith is based on that expected end. For faith is the substance of things. I have the plans to give you a hope. I know the thoughts and plans to give you a hope. For faith is the substance of things. 
Here, where does the hope come from? From here, a hope, a hope, no. From God gives me a hope. And when I hear the hope, it comes with a substance called? But if I haven't heard from God, I can't have faith. There's no such thing as a faith failure. Oh, they were walking in faith, but their faith failed. And the faith doesn't fail. No. But no. what we sometimes call faith is not faith. No. No. Thank you, dear. I was looking for it. It's presumption. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I want this. I need this. God's going to give No, have you heard? Have you listened? Because this comes from here or from here or here. It's from your head. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And as it from your head af comes, it doesn't work. It's from your head af. As you think, the Heilige Geest gaan it do what you want it to do. That's why so many Christians' lives are a mess. Because they take this dominion message and the faith message, and they think it gives them authority to live how they want to live. But it doesn't. It doesn't take you out of the will of God. It doesn't override the will of God from your life. No, it doesn't. Okay. So he has God for... Before ordained, predestined us that we should walk in them, that we should live it out. You know, in the book of Galatians, it says, Be not weary in well doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. And we use it for the offering. Not wrong, but not complete. When he talks about be not weary in well doing, be not weary in what God's called you to do. Because when you walk in what God's called you to do, that's why you need faith, because the circumstances are going to be contrary. To the hope. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. But when I have faith, I don't get weary. Because faith emboldens me and it strengthens me. Paul talks about it all the time. Mm. He says, Oh, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh in me a far more exceeding weight of glory. Mm. Yeah. But the way that he was walking wasn't from his head, but it was from his spirit. He knew the plans and the thoughts that God, and it gave him a hope and an expected end. To the point that he knew, I have finished my course. I have walked into that expected end. Oh, what a glorious place to be. Yes. <laughs> you see, faith, yes, faith will help you with your house, sorting your finances, healing for your body. But faith is for you to live life. Faith is not for stuff. The stuff is the byproduct of you living your life. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want proof? Matthew chapter 6. Yeah. We're going to start in verse You're all there. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And we know God, mammon, treasure, and, and what have you. You cannot serve God and mammon. So now we, we get the other extreme, which means Christians can't be rich. Now that's not what it's saying. It says you can't serve riches. You can serve God and have money, but you can't serve money and have God. You have to choose. And trust me, when you choose, you will be tested. <laughs> anyway, maybe we'll get into that next time. Have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> you know, that's in the Bible. Devil comes, oh, no, have you? Con no, but Lord, you've got a hedge about him. Go. It's in the Bible. Anyway, therefore I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking because it's in red in my Bible. Mm -hmm. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, not yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Remember what Jason touched on last week. Jason, they were walking, the disciples were walking, they were going to the, they, eventually they end up at, at the well with a woman who had five husbands. And on the way there, they, they, they said, We've been walking. Jesus must be hungry. We're going to get him some food. They go and look for food, and he has the inter interaction with a woman, and he hardly eats, and he said, My meat is doing the will of my father. Yeah. 
Is not life more than food? Than the rain? It's about doing the will of the Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh. So I'm going to read again. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for the body, what you shall put. It is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. There's more to your life than about eating food and what you're going to wear and where you're going to go and what you're going to. It's about doing the will of the Father because that's where true satisfaction comes from is knowing your calling and walking in that calling. And I'm not saying it happens overnight. It's pro it, it's progressive, but at least there needs to be progress. And I'm not saying you're going to get it spot on every time. And I'm, you, you know what? I'd rather go and make a mistake and have the ability to fix it than sit back scared I'm going to make a mistake. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's like one talent and doing nothing. 100%. One talent and doing nothing. You see how the messages are flowing in? Yeah. Behold the fowls of the air... For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Because He created them for a purpose. Now they don't have a will, as far as I know. <laughs> but they live in that purpose. And because they follow, they're in the purpose, everything's created for them. Birds migrate according to the seasons. You know, even the ants in your house know the cold before you know. Because they start coming in. <laughs> they had a prayer meeting. No. <laughs> because God set it up that way. <laughs> and if God sets it up for that, that for them, how much more will He not set you up? Huh? The, the ants come into your house and then they, they go on strike because there's not enough food for them. <laughs> The birds, they, they migrate and then they get there and then they, they protest because there's no food where they went or the seasons changed or something. Well, no, they go and they go and they breed and they come back. And, you, and the beautiful thing is that even the young ones just know where to go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they, they sow not need to reap nor your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more? Which, which, which of you, by taking thought... To be anxious, is what it's saying, can add one cubit to his stature. And why take you thought for raiment, for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Now, we got lilies in our garden. Now, I don't know, when I read that, we were still up on the hill, I studied what a, a lily comes from a bulb. So when it's not season for the lily, the bulb's still there, but the lily doesn't grow. So when the lily dies, it actually nourishes the ground that feeds the bulb. And when it's the season for the, bulb, for the lily to be, the bulb will blossom. And it's spectacular in beauty. Hmm? But they don't toil, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed with it. Then he says, If God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore take no thought, don't be anxious, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? That holds people back. Fear, anxiousness holds you back from walking in the will of the Father. And when you're not walking in the will of the Father, it's when the things don't get added. Yeah. Then it becomes a focus of my faith, where my faith should be focused on my calling. Yeah. Amen. Therefore, what we shall eat, where we shall be. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added. So what does it mean if it's going to be added unto you? So have you ever been to the shop that if you buy two of them, they'll give you the third one? They just added it. Did you pay for it? It was just given, right? Three for two specials. I love it when Diskim do it on my supplements. <laughs> So 
So if I'm in the will of the good father, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, are you in the kingdom? Yes. You're in a kingdom. Yes. In the kingdom, there's a king. Yes. And yes. Who's the king? Jesus. Jesus. So I don't have to seek the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. But that word seek also means follow after the kingdom. What does it mean to follow after? If there's a kingdom and there's a king, I follow after the will of the king. Now, we, we, our perception of kings and kingdoms is very skewed. You look at Charles. He's just a public figure. But back in medieval times, the king was the ruler of the kingdom. What he said went. Everything you owned belonged to the king. You had the privilege of using it. And if the king needed it, he could claim it. Back in the day, the Queen of England, they had all those kingdoms around them. They would, could go to any place, and even the fish in the water belonged to the king or the queen at that time. And could claim it. Now, you've got to understand that your father is not like these worldly kings. But he says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. But I've given you dominion over it. But now you've given me your life. Now, my dominion now works through you. So I say, oh, but he's given me dominion. Yes, but you said I'm yours. So the dominion you've given me, I want to honor you with it. Now, Jesus and Paul talks about this, that all the glory, Jesus doesn't take glory. How many of you know that? All the glory that gets given to Jesus, he gives to the Father. Because he's under dominion. <laughs> this is in your Bible. So no, 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 no. I give you dominion over the works of my hand. Let me run off and I do what I want. But no, you became a Christian, right? Yeah. Yes. Anybody here? Christians. You gave your... What do we say? I gave my... And when I gave my life, I was born again. Okay? I can't get born again without giving my life. Because Romans talks about... And I'm going to paraphrase you. You, you have to acknowledge Him as Lord. There's a thing of the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we've got lords in England, but they, they serve a very different purpose to what they are in, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Lords back in the day controlled, for lack of a better word, the peasants. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had a role of dominion, and he's become your Lord. Yeah. That's why he says, follow me, my yoke is easy. You see, we think when we give our lives to Jesus, there's no more yoke and there's no more burden. There's a burden and there's a yoke. Yeah. But it's easy and it's light. But the devil will paint a different picture for you. Yeah. But that's how dominion works. Yeah. So I can run around and say, oh, God's given me dominion. God's... But if I haven't submitted my dominion to him and then follow his leading and guiding for that dominion, it's not going to function. Yeah. Amen. So I say, well, what about the world? The devil's the God of this world. That's mm -hmm. what it says in the Bible. And you can see it all around you, but he's not God of my world. No. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, okay. But if I haven't submitted my dominion and walking in the dominion of God, who's exercising dominion? The devil. He says, one of those little foxes. It comes in very, very quickly. You see, when you start doing something based in fear, he said, don't seek after these things. When that becomes the focus of my life, it's based on fear. If I override the will of God for the life out of fear because I of my will for what I want. I've submitted my dominion. That's correct. Yeah. And that's a dangerous place to be. 
because I have dominion, but now it's not submitted to the dominion of God. Remember, I never said you don't have dominion, but you're not submitted to the will of God. Now I've submitted it to the God of the world. So if it's not in the true faith, like we just said, and it's out of fear, you see, and, and this is my opinion, but the pastor of the church died and he preached everlasting life and to eternal life and believed they were going to live forever and he died. That trying to raise him from the dead wasn't out of faith, it was out of fear because it was going to discredit the ministry. But they just discredited it more, but it was done out of fear. Amen. <laughs> Listen, this, it, it might be, uh, it's not even difficult to understand, but it might be tough to swallow, but you've got to go home and do some introspection about your life. Yeah. So I'll use these as examples, but in your own life, I've, and I'll use my life, when we went through all that stuff, I went through all those faith teachings. At that stage, you could, my bucket didn't have a memory stick. It was all on CD. I had MP3 CDs with hundreds of hours of sermons on from Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, all of them, all of them, all of them. And you can have what you say. And, and then we used to go to the order bank. And I know there's no money in the name of Jesus. I've got dominion. I command money in this account in the name of it. Go and pull. And there's no money in the name. Of it, I come against you. Well, that's bull dust. So I'm so oh, Sean, uh, uh, that was stupid. Uh, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> well, one thing I did learn when I follow after His will, things got added to me. Yeah. Things were given to me. Hmm? I, I can tell you, test me after test me after test me after test me about how God has provided for us. Have we always been perfect? No. no. Have I made mistakes? Yes. yes. But, but I'm not stupid enough to stay my mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, decisions determine if it's the wrong decision and you stay in it, you've made a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Choose life or choose death. And death comes with consequences, but so does life. Because when I choose life, certain things are added from me. When I choose death, it's taken from me. And then I want to exercise dominion. Lord, bless me, bless me. Sorry. But your choice is contrary. You cannot override your choice and want God to bless the curse. God doesn't bless the curse. God takes you out the curse. But if you choose to walk in death, that's your choice. Because with the death comes the curse. The two are married to each other and cannot be separated. The two time together. So make your choice and make it wisely. Because be not weary in well doing, for you shall reap in due season. There's a thing called due season. But there's due season for every seed that's sown. And if I do not correct the seed that I'm sowing and I carry on in the line that is incorrect, there's also a due season. And sometimes those things can become irreversible if I don't change. Yeah. I'm not talking from here. I've seen it in people's lives where they've made choices and their arrogance has stopped them from repenting. But those choices come with consequences, people. Yes. Amen. And you know what? It's the, sometimes it's a tough choice. What if I hurt their feelings? Listen, <laughs> I'd rather hurt his feelings than grieve the spirit of God. How many preach? I'm on a little oh, glory. Preachers like like William Branham. William Branham, if you don't know, moved in the gifts of the, the Spirit of God like we've never seen. Many people have tried to imitate it and fabricate it, but we haven't seen it since. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. But his doctrine went skewed. Yeah. And people came across his path. Men, not not not, not Mickey Mouse. You know, like, you get people in the church that will come and counsel the pastor and they've been born again three weeks. Yeah, I feel God is telling, and I just, it's, it's, 
highly recognized men in the body of Christ, if we could call the, the, the generals of God, and they come to William Branham and they say, Brother Branham, God spoke to me. Your doctrine is not right. You need to change it. And he ignored it. And the next man would come, Brother Branham, that we just know about. You see, it's Paul. You remember in Paul, Jesus' first encounter with Paul, what did he say to him? How long will you kick against the pricks? Now, you know what a prick is in that time? If they hit the, the cattle's feet with it to direct them. So Jesus is saying, hey, I've been warning you. My opinion, it's not in the Bible, but Paul had a choice to make that day. You either continue killing the church and you will be dealt with, or you come back in line with my will and you walk in the plan that I have. Paul had a choice to make that day. Because Jesus said, how long are you going to kick against what I've been telling you? And the same happened to William Branham, the Holy Spirit, but he made a choice. He died. Where was God's protection? Where was God's protection? Where was, oh, he could have quoted Psalm 91 50 times that morning. Doesn't mean a thing. No. You see this in due season. And I'm speaking strongly this morning. Make your decisions, people. <laughs> anyway, hallelujah. You can make a note of this, Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to pick it up in verse 24. This is, we, we love this, this, this part of the Bible when it comes to, to, to marriages and stuff because we teach the wife to submit to the husband and the husband to love the wife. But the issue is, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, who's the church? Therefore, you're subject. What does it mean to be subject? Subordinate. In subjection to, under one's admonition to obey, you've got to obey. You want dominion, learn to obey. Then you won't have to confess of dominion, you'll see your dominion. Glory be to God. You'll walk in dominion because it's given. And when I obey, these things are just added. It's given. You'll see the manifestation of it. You won't have to beg and plead and things will happen. You know, we, we, we take what Jesus says in the book of Mark. He says, therefore, have faith in God. Have faith in God. If I have to have faith in God, it means I have to trust Him. And if I have to trust Him, it means His Word is directing me in my path. That's what trust is. Yes, amen. Thank you, yes. Trust is linked to obedience. Yes. I'm obeying you because I trust you. You, you know, I, I, you go to a situation, I've, we had a situation in the, in the school, and we went and we sought legal advice. It was hard on I how to handle it. So we went to a lawyer. And yes, listen to the lawyer, and I listened to the Holy Spirit, which is the most important. But I know the lawyer knows the law. She's at that price, he better. <laughs> But there was trust, so we listened to him. And yes, had the, the agreement of the Holy Spirit. This is uh, and totally contrary to what most of the church would have done. But that's besides the point. <laughs> but we trust him because we listened because we had a trust in him. Yeah. Have faith. Faith starts with trust. And he's going to direct your path because he has, we read it in Ephesians, Works predestined that you should walk in them. And that's what faith is linked to. Faith is linked to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Yeah. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you. To prosper you and to give you an expected end. But then I've got to listen and I've got to obey. Yeah. Right? Or I'm just going to do what I want to do. That looks like good. That looks like success. Let me follow success. You can't follow success. You've got to follow the... Let me follow my happiness. This makes me feel good. This feels so right, yet it's so wrong. Yeah. 
So therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be subject unto husband. So the church needs to be subject, and Christ is the anointing, the Holy Spirit. We want the anointing to be subject to us. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. You work for me, Holy Spirit. I say, huh? have faith in God. I'm going to go back to this. Have faith in God. If any man shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So I can have whatsoever I saith. No, have faith in God. Yeah. I know the, the, you look at it, it says have the God kind of faith. I can't have God's faith if I haven't got God's will. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. 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 So when I'm in God's will and I confront the mountain and I believe in my heart yeah. because it's obstructing me from doing, because there's an expected end and you're blocking me from the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. Yeah. I can say unto the mountain. But I can't go around and talk to any mountain I want to just because I want to, then I think the anointing is subject to me and I'm not subject to the anointing. Now, I know the anointing in me, and you, the scripture that will bear here, that I can grieve the Spirit. I can stop doing what the Spirit, but it doesn't mean I control the, so I can stop it from flowing. But that's me overriding the authority. He's, he's a gentleman. He says, Sean, you know, two weeks ago when I ministered, that was difficult. I don't want to do stuff like that. I still said in the car, why don't they make, why didn't the Holy Spirit make Jason do that the week before? Yeah. <laughs> but I, cho I had a choice to make there and then. Do I do it or don't I do it? Yeah. But then I'm outside my realm of authority. Because now there's a purpose, there's a plan. I've got to be subject to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, you know, so let's just use an example. Holy Spirit says, minister to this person, tell him this, this, and this. He has a person in the wheelchair. Lord, I want you to raise that person out of the wheelchair. Mm. But no, I want you to speak to this person. Yeah. Hang on. <coughs> and then, no, but you know, God said, I can lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. We're going to have a, a mighty revival here today. And praise the Lord. Uh, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> you with me? You with me? Lord, I want the house on the top of the hill. Yes, but I haven't called you to live here. You're about 600 kilometers away from where I called you. <laughs> you ain't getting no house on the top of the hill. You can name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. But when you're in the 600 kilometers, I'll show you a house. And then you name it and claim it. And then you call it in and it'll come in. And it won't be hard work, it'll come. You want to know how I know? Because I walked in it. Glory be to Jesus. You know, God is good. God wants the best for you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And God has given you dominion for a purpose. And God has a will for your life, a will to prosper you, a good will, and an expected end. He, he, he wants the best for you. Every day of your life, He wants you to walk in the blessings. Yes, you'll face persecution, but the blessings will come. But have have the initiative to follow the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit and stop setting the things aside that God has asked you to deal with and you're not dealing with it. I keep going back to it, but anyway. You've got to deal with those foxes. How many of you deal with the ants in your house? If there's ants in the bread and they're coming and every time you put the bread there, the ants are there, what are you going to do? You, you, okay, then what happens? The ants stop. So you can keep going for. If you're not dealing with those situations, it's like leaving the ants to come into your bread every single day. Yes, amen. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. He's robbing you. Not God, the enemy. Yeah. But you're allowing it. And then you're saying, I come against him. But you open the door. Yeah. And you said, come on in, devil. And then you close the door, made him a cup of coffee and tea, and then everything goes wrong, and you say, I come against you. Yeah. doesn't work that way. In the name of Jesus, get out. No, change what you did, get him out, and then stop letting him back in. Yeah, that's correct. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. This, the, Romans chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 and right into chapter 8 and what is, is phenomenal reading. So we're just going to take this. For if one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one or through one Jesus Christ. So we are called to reign in life. Anybody with me? So I'm not telling you you can't reign in life. But God has preordained your life. The steps of a righteous man are suggested. <laughs> this is my recommendation. You know? But, you know, just order anything off the menu. No. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, and, and we don't have time this morning, but if you go to Romans chapter 4, chapter 5, and, and, and Romans chapter 4, we might as well go there. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. You should know this because I've, I've ministered on this. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed. Who's the seed of Abraham? So there's a promise to you. Is there a promise to you? Yes. What's the promise? The heir or what? Ah. So he says, then Romans chapter 5, verse 17, that if you receive this grace, because Romans chapter 4 starts talking about grace, mm -hmm. and if you receive this grace, you're reigning life. Yes. You're heir of the world and you're reigning life. You're heir of the world and you're reigning life. You're heir of the, how many, yeah, that's, <laughs> but then there's another part of this chapter, this book, which is Romans chapter 8. It says, therefore now there is no condemnation which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the? Oh, so now how do I reign in life? I've got to walk after the? Because for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, what did we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 17? For if by one man's offense, death reigned. Okay. But for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, the, the, the Mosaic law, the Torah, it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own sin in likely flesh. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned it in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Oh, but I'm free from death. Through grace, I've been redeemed from death. Death reigned, but now through grace, I reign. But if I'm carnally minded, it's death. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a contradiction. No, it's not. No. Because your freedom is in the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Yes. For the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, raised us. And Ephesians chapter 1, and, and we, we touched on it in Ephesians chapter 4. So the end of Ephesians chapter 1 says, And the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead. Who are we going to turn there? Quickly. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to pick it up. Verse 19. I'm just, you write it down, I'm going to read it. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, not in Jesus, in Christ. Yeah. So what's the difference? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because look after the cross. <laughs> see what see what because now I've submitted my life to Jesus now I'm in Christ so there is no time so he wrote it in Christ when he raised him from the dead yes he raised Jesus from the dead but he raised Christ from the dead and we we're in Christ so we were raised from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. So he's talking about Christ, but Christ is with the Holy Spirit. It's, Christ is the anointing yeah. of the anointed one. Hmm? So when I'm in Christ, when I'm in the 
anointing. When I'm, we, we use, you know, have you ever, you got a church and the pastor says, let's get in the spirit. Not that we've ever been out the spirit, but it's not that you have to get in the spirit. Sometimes your mind is wandering and you need to focus on the spirit. Okay. Now I want you to keep this in mind. So in Christ, in the spirit, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over to the church. He's head over all things. That doesn't exclude the church. But he gave him to the church, which is his body. He's the head with the body. How does anointing flow? If you ever, have, you, have you read the Old Testament when they anointed? It started here. The anointing flows from the head to the body. They never anointed the body. They always anointed the head. Which is his body, the fullness of him. And you, when you're dead in Christ, we're in, past, we're in chapter 2 now. Uh, and we're just going to jump to verse, for the time's sake. Verse 6. And has raised us, us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when I'm in Christ, and I'm in Christ, but then I've got to walk in Christ. And when I'm walking in Christ and I'm led by the Spirit, I'm not carnally minded. When I walk according to my mind, I'm subject. What does the mind perceive? The, the mind doesn't perceive the things of God. The natural man perceiveth not the things of God. The mind. But my spirit receives it. Kenneth Copeland says we don't walk, we don't live outside in, we live inside out. I think it's a nice way of putting it. So... When I make decisions based on my perceptions, or my, Pastor Chris says it's your five senses. Yeah. Everything I perceive in the natural realm dictates how I live. But often what I perceive in the natural realm is contrary to what I know in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Now when I walk according to that, don't get me wrong, you're born again, you're in Christ. But I don't choose to walk in that position because I've made it, I've now positioned myself to walk according to something else. If I, I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. So I leave myself vulnerable. But when I walk into the, according to the leading of guiding, I walk in the position that I am in Christ, mm -hmm. yeah. far above. Mm -hmm. When I walk according to the, the, the carnal desires, I don't walk in that position. It's very easy for me to get back there because that's, that's where I come from now. That's where I live. That's my domain. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you understand? So, you, you know, you say, oh, Sean, I'm not, you're right. I need to make it. But it's so quick to get back in there mm -hmm. yeah. because that's where you're created to be. You've just stepped out of it. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord. There was a guy in the Bible. He had two sons. He had the older son and the younger son. And he was a rich toppy. He was a farmer. Now, we, we work in agriculture. Let me tell you, if they tell you the farmers are battling, they're lying. That's the ones you know. That's the ones you know. Yeah. <laughs> So this, this farmer, he was obviously very wealthy. And, and the youngest son went to him and said, give me my inheritance. Mm -hmm. Because he saw stuff mm -hmm. that tempted him. Yeah. And he left. And the father was willing. He said, go. And he left. Yeah. And the Bible says he had riotous living. He was living it up. Yeah. And, and he, if, if I could put it in my terms, he, he was led by the, his carnal mind. He was living fleshly. He was living worldly. But he was still the son of the father. Yeah. He was still an heir. Yeah. But he wasn't living like it. Mm -hmm. no. To the point where everything he, he had, because he made a choice. Yeah. And that choice determined his destiny. And he never chose the pig pen. He never chose to eat with the pigs. But his choices led him there. You see, your choices have consequences. And the Bible says, when he came to himself, yeah. you can go read this, I'm not going to turn it. The Bible says, very specific, yeah. when he came to himself, you know what you need to do? You need to come to yourself, who you are in Christ, and understand who you are in Christ, because it will change your decisions. Yeah. He said, let me go back, because I'll even be a servant in my father's house, because it's better than the crap I'm living in now. Yeah. And the Bible says his father was waiting there every day for him to come back. Yeah. Yes, amen. But when he came to himself, when he realized, I have a father. Yeah. Yes. 
And when he came back, the father was willing to receive him. All his decisions led to that point. But he chose to make another decision. I'm going back into the will of my father. I'm not going to live according to the flesh. I'm going to live according to the spirit. I'm going to make decisions. And then the father accepted him. And then he pleaded with the father, please, let me go have a bath and dress. Please. No. Things were added to him. I said things were added to him. He, what did the father say? Go get my best coat. Put it on him. Go get the best fatted calf. We're going to party. Go get my ring. Put it on his finger. It was added. Why? Because he was back in the will of the Father. When you're in the will of the Father, he didn't have food to eat. He had the fatted calf. His clothes were stinking. He had was in rags. And when he was in the will of the Father, he got the best. It was added unto him. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all take no thought what you're going to eat. He was thinking, if I take this, I can eat this. I can go there. I can have this. And, and everything he wanted was actually where he was. Yeah. Everything he wanted was in the will of the Father. Everything he wanted is everything you want in your life is in the will of the Father. If you're in the will, every single desire you have will be fulfilled. Amen. It might not be how you think, but it will be fulfilled. I told you before, that's not my dream house, but I am so content in that house. Not complacent, content. It meets every need. My, I travel a lot. My wife and my children feel as safe as anything. They don't feel distraught by me traveling and not being there. We haven't had any incidents at our house. Yeah, except, <laughs> I got this car. I pull into the office. Everyone comes. Yes, nice car, Sean. Yes, you're going to cuck when you have to place those tires. No. So three weeks ago, I'm going from City Deep into Gosworth Park. The road in the dip is it's hectic. I've got my sunglasses on, the shadow, I don't see a pothole. I hit it with my right tire. Boom, I've got a bubble. Boom, I've got to replace the tire. Did I cuck? No. 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 <laughs> I actually said to the guy, I looked at my tires, my back tires, he says, You've got a bit more, but you should be thinking. So I said, Order them, I'll put them on next week. And I didn't go, what's your cheapest alternative? I said, the same tire that the car came with, I want. Yes. You want to know why? It's more expensive, but I've got 90,000 Ks out those tires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want, I'm not going to tell you, you can take a picture of the tire and you can Google the price. But when I needed it, I didn't have to try exercise faith. Now I'm, I'm, I'm getting on touchy ground. Eh? I need a lakarabasanda rabasiki rabura come against the sinner. Okay, it, it was just there. You know what my faith is doing at the moment? Lord, where do you want me? Am I, I know I'm in the right job, but I'm, there's a shift happening. Lord, my calling on my life is that I can feel the change. And you know, I've been talking about having a men's thing. And I've been planning the men's thing, and now the money's in the top of the cupboard. <laughs> and there's been changes and now let me tell you it's different to how it started in my spirit and we're almost there I've almost got everything and it's going to happen but there's a change in my ministry yeah. Amen. that's what my faith's for yeah. hello yeah. You know, Sean, but it's because you're minister I'm not a full time minister I use my faith every day in my work. Lord, help me, lead me, guide me. Listen to the leading God. Do I get it right every day? Probably sometimes get it wrong more than I get it right. But I, we didn't have to exercise our faith for tire. It was there. So I want to use the same son had a brother. And he worked hard in the father's fields. But he lived below his privileges. So we almost got two extremes. We got the son that wants everything but runs off, does his own thing. 
And then we got the one, I go to church every Sunday, I do this, I do this. And if, what did the father say? He says, you know, he came, he's this, this. I've been here, I've worked, and I've done everything. He said, everything I have is yours. Yeah. But what's the key? Stay in the will of the Father. Because when you're in the will of the Father, everything I have is in yours. Because when he took it, the youngest son, he took his inheritance and he went in his name. And when I say he went in his name, he used his authority and his dominion to... Yeah. <laughs> and the other son, on the other side, had all authority and all dominion, but never exercised it. All things that the Father has are mine. I'm quoting from Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit. And then what does he say what the Holy Spirit will do? Okay, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. You know this. <laughs> you should know this. If you don't know this, you've got problems. He said, the comforter shall come. He'll speak unto you. Shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he hears the Father, he will speak unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. And he will, he will show it unto you. Again, Jesus says, I say unto you, all things the Father has are mine. And he will show it unto you. And when he says show it, he will reveal it, transmit it. It basically gives you access to it. This is key, people. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's not the strength of your faith. It's his ministry. But he will lead you and he will guide you. He will hear from the Father and he will talk to you. Not of his own, but from the Father. Then he will take of man and all things that the Father has of man. And he will take of man and give it to you. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be. When you walk under his dominion, you walk in true dominion. Yes. Then it's not a battle. <laughs> I mean, if everything, and I, I, it's a bad example in our country, but if everything worked perfectly, the law was right, traffic officers had their respect, they weren't correct, corrupt and everything, in a perfect utopia, a traffic officer stops you, you're driving 120 Lionel in a 60 zone. I've seen you do it. And he stands in <laughs> and he stops you. He doesn't have a roadblock. He's just got a white glove on. Remember the old man with the snort and his, his aviator glasses? <laughs> hey, Lionel, you used to get stopped like that in the old days. <laughs> with the Afrikaans soak. And he goes, and then you pull over. You could drive him over. No, you were over the speed limit. But he had dominion. Yeah. Yes. He had authority. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't go, shame would stop here. Yeah? He just knew. Yeah. <laughs> but he was operating in delegated authority and dominion. He was in the he was allowed to do it. Why is it must it be so complicated for the church? So, so it should simply be when I'm in the will of the Father, it's simply no devil. Move. Mountain, move. I'm not over, I promise you. Amen. Amen. I hope you got something. I want to close with this one. You might stand so long, or if you want to write it down, write it down. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Your King James Version says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keeps the law will be happy. That the the Passion Translation says, if people can't see what God is doing, yeah, they stumble over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. Amen. I want to read that again. <laughs> if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Yeah. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are blessed. I'm, I said I was going to close with that. But how does faith come by here? Faith come. So let's quote it exactly how it is in the Bible. Faith comes by... 
So I'm going to break it up for you. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing, hearing. And then hearing comes by the Word of God. The Word of God, yes, is the foundation of my faith, but it needs to produce an ability for me to hear. Because only when I hear does faith come. It's not the Logos, it's the Revealed. Revealed word comes from here. I hear it. And it doesn't come like, oh, it doesn't come like a scripture. It comes with an instruction. It, it gives me a leading and a guide. It leads me. And when I'm being led, faith is there. Because now, here we go right back. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. To bless you, to prosper you, to give you an expected end. Now I'm hearing the plans and the thoughts that give me the expected end. And faith is the substance of that end. I'm going to read my Bible 300 times because then I'm going to have faith. You can read it and have no faith. But when you, it speaks to you and it leads you, faith comes. And it's not, it gets added. It's just something that's there that I have this boldness and this confidence. Yes. And Paul talks about it, and I don't want to take more time, but let me tell you, sometimes what we think is not faith, like Leo said, it's presumption. Yes. And that's dangerous. <coughs> and that's why we see all this dominion and this prosperity stuff get skewed. You know where prosperity is? It's in the will of God. Yes. When you walk in the will of God, you're prosperous. Yes. You know, like Jason and Tanya want to go up to Mozambique. Now, your definition of prosperity, oh man, I want a nice sports car and everything. And then Jason, oh, I believe God for a sport. What's a sports car going to help him in Mozambique? You go to the Congo and you oh, I want this car. Oh, no, 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 I want to bless the people. That's not prosperity. Mm-hmm. Prosperity is having the sufficiency to do what God's called you successfully. Amen. That is prosperity. And if you're doing what God's called you to do successfully, you're prosperous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Oh, this ministry is not successful because it hasn't got a big building. Is this where God's called us? Are we doing what He's asked us to do? Then we're success. We're prosperous. Yeah. Yeah. See, is there more? Yes, there'll be more. Yes. But be faithful with where you are. Ah, yes. yes. oh, we. <laughs> you must stand. Anybody? Got a testimony. Well, it's basically um, well, faith comes by hearing and hearing and by the word of God. That is, when you read the word prayerfully, I normally put the flame forward, I pray in tongues, I worship the Lord, and I'm reading, and then uh, explanations come into my mind, into my heart. You know, like for instance, what I shared last week, I think it is about that the uh, anointing works as he wants to, as he sees fit for that particular purpose. And also uh, in different people throughout. And that's when the Lord, when it came and it was dropped in my, in my spirit, you know, that the anointing is tailor-made for me. Mm. Where I have to walk in. That I have to walk in, mm. you see, and it can be tailor made or custom made for the situation you're going into, but for that you have to hear from God. See? And then, as what, Sean, what Sean was saying is, then when you hear from God and it's dropped into your, to your spirit, you're walking to the will of God. The faith is there and the confidence mm. is there to do what you've been told to do. Mm. You don't have to fret. Is it going to work out? Is this? Is this? Is so? Is so? Mm. But that takes a, a relationship mm. with God. Mm. Hearing from God via the Holy Spirit. That mm. building up a relationship with the Holy Spirit what lives within you. That's mm. the way it works. And uh, that takes time. Mm. At the, I mean, uh, in a natural link between husband and wife. Uh, they work together. They do things. They, they, spend, they spend their thoughts. If there's no free communication, that's one of the biggest problems I've experienced. I've lived in that. If there's little communication, there is trouble. And the same way, we need to communicate with God via the Holy Spirit within us. Yeah. But then we can understand His thoughts. 
Mm. You see, then they work under authority. And, uh, and I think the script is in, in uh, and that's probably in uh, Second Corinthians, that talks about that we have the mind of Christ. But mm. at the end of the chapter says, do we have that to instruct the Lord? No. Mm. Mm. He doesn't share his thoughts and doesn't share his purposes with us to instruct him. Mm. He shared it with us to obey him. Mm. To be under submission, to be under a dominion. Mm. You know, that's <laughs> very put in a nutshell, but that's <laughs> that, that's what, what, what I'm experiencing, you see. And this doesn't always feel good, but... <laughs> Amen. Sorry, excuse me. I'm just going to do something. Don't mind me. Me too. Well, let's hear it, Maud. Remember, quite a while back, Jason gave us a piece of paper, and we all had to write down something on that piece of paper we believe in God for. You can tell my that mine was answered on Wednesday. I don't know if anybody else can remember what they wrote on theirs, but I can sing praises. Mine was answered. Anybody else got a test me? Can I share also with the piece of paper? I also wrote something down, but I actually never put it in the basket because I knew Jason would know it was me and I was a bit shy. But the Lord still knows your heart because a few years late, actually, about three months ago, I realized my testimony was, my healing was given. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. The Lord knows the, the desires of your heart, even if you don't. You write on your piece of paper yeah. and see if you can tick it off. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Leo said, Sammy, you have a relationship with the Lord, and something popped in my spirit. A lot of you got a relationship with your circumstances. You got a relationship with a problem. You know, it's, it's a high school team. You've got to break up with that person, that thing. You've got to break up with it. You've got to sever those ties, people. Oh, let's just stand on. Holy, holy, holy.
Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. presence is here. There's some of you in this place, you need to make, you need to make a break from the old. <coughs> and, and what I shared this morning has resonated in your spirit and what's been shared has resonated. But I want you to come forward. And, and before everybody rushes forward. I want you to use this, point to the chair as an imaginary line. But this is serious, this is not, yeah. this is not, I'm going to do it and I hope God touches me and things change. You determine in your heart, I'm parting. And if you haven't noticed, if you know me, and I sense you're not serious, I'll send you back. <laughs> Just the way it is. You say, why? 
I'm, I'm not saying, but you're not there yet. I want people that are there that are, want, are wanting to make the change now. If you're not there yet, that's not a condemnation on you. That if you're not ready to make, don't make that decision. The time will come when you're ready to make it. The seeds are being sown. And we'll water those seeds. You keep coming here, you're going to get water. If you don't like what's been ministered, that's what we're sowing. Yeah. And it's going to bear a harvest. But if you're ready this morning to cross that line and say, Sean, I'm making a change today. I want you to come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. decision now, Holy Spirit, that you, oh, that your voice will be clearer than ever. Thank you, Lord. And as I make that decision today, Lord, and some of those decisions we know, they may be difficult and they may be tough to make, but Lord, as they may, that your leading and guiding will take them. And they'll see the fruit of those decisions, not, not in a long way off, but soon and quickly, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Oh, glory be to God. Oh. We, 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 we want to run, we want to go further and do more, but we feel like something that we just hindered that this, if I could put almost like a rope around your waist, and you want to go and it, and it pulls you back, and you say, okay, not, not now, no. we've we got to deal with this, and, and we've got to deal with that, and Lord, we've got to deal, and Lord, we've prayed about this, and we've prayed about this, and the Lord said, yes, and I've heard your prayers, and I am, I am, I am busy. I am, but now leave it in my hands. Now go, for I have led you, and I have spoken, and you've said, Lord, but I, we, 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 yes, but this and that, and, and, and Lord, this, and, and the Lord said, I'm, I'm busy. I'll deal with it. You go. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. And even if the enemy tries, and he makes it look like, like it's not working out, he says, I will. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise up the standard against him. And I am busy. And I am working. And I am. And you just thank me for what I'm doing. And then listen and go. And I will deal with it. I will handle it. For you've put it in my hands. And I'm faithful. And I'm true. And I will ensure that it has the expected end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For just... Strength. Love and appreciate it.
Glory, glory, glory. You know, it's like a battery of a car would be recharged and depleted and depleted and depleted and recharged. We rip it out in the name of Jesus. We put a new one, new technology, completely new, permanent, inexhaustible, inexhaustible. And with it, of the questioning, why the thing is running flat at times, will go. The, you can only say it in that, that celebrate that it gebeur. I had you forgiven. I had it weggevat. I had it schoon gemaakt. But you don't come back. And on the self-verordeling loop. Want dit is niet nodig niet. Ik was veroordeeld. Voor jou. Die straf. Van jouw vrede. Was op mij geneemd. Laat het daar. Laat die dingen samen met mij. Want dit is mijn wil. Dan die eind. Waar ik voor jou de stem heb. Zal tot volle bloei komen. Tot volle bloei. Die mensen zullen het zien. Hulle zullen het horen. Hulle zullen het voelen. Want jij leeft het. Yo. Thank you, Jesus. Yo. Glory, glory, glory. Oh. Oh Lord, hey, that's all I can say. Hey, hey, oh, Ik kan het zeggen zoals het komt. Dat manneke wat daar in die reis toe zit. Zal niet langer een last voor jou wees niet. Of raar, liever niet langer zo voel zoals een last. Niet langer zo voel zoals een last. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the natural, we don't know why. We don't know why. But it's not for us to know why. Oh. <laughs> There's only the beginning. 
It's only the beginning. For more, as the scripture says, be not weary, for you shall reap. It has not gone unnoticed. It has not gone unappreciated. Oh. Oh. Glory, glory. For it is not the end. It's not the end. There is more. Lift your hands. The presence of the Lord is here. His name is Hallelujah, Amen. Oh. Is there anybody that needs prayer for anything? for Benita's sake and everyone's sake it's something I saw Jason ministered from the scripture about laying hands on the sick and they shall recover and I want to read something to you so it's in Mark chapter 16 verse 18 I shall tell them that drink and do and they shall lay hands on the sick. And your King James Version says they shall recover. And I started reading into that. And what the Greek says is when I lay hands on you, you possess recovery. Now did you understand? Because sometimes we think I'm going to lay hands and recover. Something is imparted. Yeah. Now, you know, if Leo said I need a phone and I give him the phone. And he never uses the phone. He hasn't actually got the phone. No. Every time lands are, this is controversial, but it's true. Every time hands are laid hands, oh, every time hands are laid on the sick, recovery is imparted in the name of Jesus. Blood, high blood pressure, you leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And kidneys, whatever is causing it, you align yourself with the will and the word of God. And by his stripes, Benita is healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Healed. Glory be to God. Anybody else need prayer? Jesus. What do we speak to you now in the name of Jesus? You align and you come right. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. By the power of the risen King. Yeah. Holy Spirit, start working now, supernaturally. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Body, I command you in the name of Jesus to come right. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Lord. Jesus, whatever's causing it, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Risen King. Work right now in this body. 
Holy Spirit work supernaturally. Change what needs to be changed. In the name of Jesus. Come on, you leave in the name of Jesus. Go. You leave this body now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm just going to say, some people fall, some people don't. It's not about falling. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. It's not. I'm not against falling, please. But also, people when they don't fall, oh, nothing happened. I just read to you when hands are laid on you, something is important. Uh, you, you, I didn't feel anything. Now the Bible says something was imparted. There's a strength causing a recovery in your body, right? If you came up for healing, something was imparted. Yes, amen. Something was imparted. Yes, amen. 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 We oh, glory be to God. I don't normally do stuff like this and I haven't spoken to my wife, so I'm putting my, my foot in it. Deirdre, come forward, please. So, I understand there's an issue with the car again. Have you got a quote? No, Mark's doing it himself. He's going to fix it himself. 